before I video reviews. This time I'm reviewing something a little bit different, which is the start of reviewing Doctor Who accessories and figures. Now I've been a real big Doctor Who fan ever since I was a kid, a long time ago. And no, I'm not telling you how long ago. And really a big fan of the current version of Doctor Who, so yeah, I've been a huge fan all my life. Now don't worry, I'm not giving up Transformers. In fact, as I'm recording this, Beast Hunters, Voyager, Grimwing, and Ultra Magnus are in the mail. Should be here soon. But let's talk about why we're here. This is the light and sound effects Doctor Who, the 11th Doctor's sonic screwdriver. Very excited about this. Let's start this review by taking a quick look at the box. So on the top, you've got a little BBC symbol right there. Age is 5+. Plus. They want you to go to character-online.co.uk. Huh. Maybe someday. Spring-loaded extending action. Just don't poke your eye out. Light and sound effects. Choking hazards, small parts, not for children under three years old. But this says five plus. So which is it? What happens if you're four? Perhaps the doctor can solve this mystery. This is manufactured by Character Options Limited. Furthermore, on the back, you've got all kinds of warnings. I mean, they, they really stress the fact that this isn't for kids because it comes with these little tiny batteries. And you don't want your kid swallowing these things. It could be very, very dangerous. So parents, be careful out there. They want you to recycle. It's a product of underground toys. You need an actual screwdriver to insert batteries into your sonic screwdriver. Think about that. And a barcode, some fine print, nothing on the bottom. So actually, that's the box. Let's get to why we're here. So here is the 11th Doctor screwdriver. And these things have varied over the years. Each doctor kind of uh, reinvents his, his sonic screwdriver. You could sort of compare that maybe to a lightsaber, to where each of the Jedi and Sith construct their own lightsabers. Well, each doctor, each version of the doctor, uh, constructs his own sonic screwdriver. This happens to be the actor Matt Smith. He's the 11th doctor's uh, sonic screwdriver. And there's quite a bit of detail on this. Let's take a look up close. What you have is a translucent green emitter. It's made of plastic. Uh, you know, the whole thing actually feels real light. There's no metal here outside of screws. So uh, this is very plasticky. It's light in the hand, feels a bit hollow. In fact, sounds a bit hollow. You have painted silver on the top. You have painted silver right here. This is plastic as well. Looks like it's metal, but uh, it's really not. You have the copper-colored plastic in here. Copper ring. What looks like almost could be a leather-type deal right here is, uh, nope, more plastic. You've got a real shiny-feeling white plastic here. More copper paint and a copper on the bottom. Now, the sonic screwdriver started out as sort of a lockpick for the Doctor, and, uh, and as the series progressed, this thing actually turned into more of a door opener, laser, and fighting aliens, and it really is a jack-of-all-trades. It's a, it's a weapon, it gets him out of trouble, and so on and so forth. It actually made its debut with the second Doctor. The first Doctor never had a sonic screwdriver on screen. So debuted with the second Doctor in the episode called War Games, a part of the sixth season, and it looked kind of like a, like a pen light. Uh, and these things have progressed over time, and uh, this is more what the, what the modern screwdrivers look like. Now, to activate the sonic screwdriver, you've got two buttons right here. The first one extends the arm up. The second one makes the emitter light up and makes a sound like this. Now, it has two different sounds. Each time you push it, it makes a different sound. Listen carefully. High pitch lower pitch. So pretty cool. They gave you two different variations of the thing. If I had a wish list, it would have been that it might have fluctuated between the high and the low, or started low and gotten high, but uh, as is, it's a nice enough touch. Now pushing this button right here, well, it extends it out, and there is a lot of pressure behind that spring. I mean, when that jets out, if I hold it loosely enough, it probably would fly out of my hand. But uh, this is after he generally uses the sonic screwdriver and uh, takes a look at the tip and reads the readings, even though there are none. But, you know, play along. It's fine. Now, a bit of a design issue here. The button to make the emitter light up is right here. When I extend this arm, the button moves away from the button that I would press to make that thing light up. So you would think, uh-oh, now how am I going to make this thing go off? Well, what the designers actually did is they have a switch in the back. You take this handle, and you open it up just like that. You've got a red button. Don't push the red button. Actually, sure, let's do that. And yeah, you can actually use the thing 
while it's on. I'm going to turn my lights off just so you can see uh, this is a pretty bright light. Take a look. I don't know how well that's coming across, but uh, it's actually a very, very bright light. Very nice. Now, to change the batteries in this thing, relatively simple. All you do is you hold it like this so that you're holding on to this copper part and this whole base, and you turn it counterclockwise just a bit. It'll make a little bit of a click noise, and then you can pull this whole thing out, and you see the little arrow. Once you pull it out, you can get to the battery compartment. To put it back in, you just give it a shove, give it a twist, and it's all locked back into place. Now, as the instructions do tell you, you are going to need an actual screwdriver to stick the batteries in. So just make note of that. Now, another kind of a bummer, even though it may be more show accurate, is there's no light on the inside. Now, you can clearly see through it here, but as you're pushing the button, there's nothing else that lights up, just the very tip of the emitter, which is fine. And to close it back up, per the instructions, you just want to push on the emitter and have it lock into place. Now, I wouldn't call this a quality control issue, but on mine, one of these silver bits is more loose than the other. It's this one right here. And, uh, you know, kind of wiggles around, but everything appears to be nice and secure, so I don't actually think that that's going to come off on me. So anyway, that's my review of the 11th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver. All in all, feels light, a little bit hollow, the button is nice, the sounds are nice, and overall, if you're a Doctor Who fan, I do indeed highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching. More Doctor Who things on the way. I've got a whole bunch of figures that are actually going to be shipping soon. Subscribe to my channel if you're interested in Transformers and Doctor Who and things like that. You can reach me at youtube.com slash ebeforeinet. If you want to follow me on Facebook, I'm at facebook.com slash ebeforei. And on Twitter at e underscore before underscore i. Thanks again so much for watching. We'll see you again real soon.